Hi everyone, today we're going to be talking about ways to help your child with their math skills. We're going to be talking about one-to-one -one correspondence and something called rote counting. One-to-one -one correspondence is the ability to match numbers to objects or objects to objects. For example, a child counting blocks and saying the numbers one through five as they count the five blocks or matching one sock to one shoe. Rote counting is the simplest number concept that children develop, and it means basically kids counting numbers sequentially. Adults often mistake rote counting for a child truly understanding the meaning of the numbers that they're counting. For example, sometimes a parent will come in and ask why a teacher is still teaching their child about numbers one through 10, because at home, they can count all the way to 30 on their own. But the difference is that a child, when they're rote counting, is counting numbers sequentially based on memory. When a child is doing one-to-one -one correspondence, they're understanding not only what the number is, but that the number corresponds to a specific amount of objects. An easy way to check and see if your child is actually understanding one-to-one -one correspondence is to ask them to count objects while tapping the objects. For example, here I have some mini erasers that are suns. If I lay these out on a board and then ask a child to tap and count them, a child that understands one-to-one -one correspondence will tap each sun individually and say a number as they tap. One, two, three, four, five. A child that doesn't understand one-to-one -one correspondence might count like this. One, two, three, four, or like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. Or they might count like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now count how many are left. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, start at the top and count across. One, two, three, four, five. That's five. it, five. Can you find a number five? Awesome. Count how many bees you have. Okay, you need to say a number as you tap. One, two, three, four, five, eight, good. One of the tools that I use in my classroom to help children understand one-to-one -one correspondence are dice. I have some in my classroom that are like this, that are larger, and then I have some that are just the regular size dice. We use these for math games, but we also use them for other things. So sometimes we'll do an art project where I ask the child to roll the dice and then get that many objects. So if a child rolled and got a two, I could, for instance, ask them to pick two colors of markers to use for their art project, or to roll the dice, get a four, and then get four scraps of paper from our collage bin. Another popular project that I do in my classroom is called roll a face. We do it sometimes with a normal face, or sometimes around like Halloween or Christmas, we'll do something special. So for example, around Halloween, we usually do a roll a monster. So each side of the dice would correspond to something that we're gonna to add to our monster. If the child rolls a two, then they add two noses to their face. Then they roll again. If they roll a five, they would need to add five arms to their monster. And the child keeps doing that until they've completed the way that they want their monster to look. You can also do this as an outdoor activity where each side of the dice corresponds to an action that they're supposed to do. If they roll a one, they clap one time. If they roll a two, they stomp twice. If they do roll a three, they jump three times. If they roll a four, they hop four times. Another really engaging way to help your child with one-to-one -one correspondence is to sing songs with counting. For example, there's the song, The Five Little Ducks. Have your child do finger motions with it 
where they're singing, five little ducks went out one day over the field and far away. And then as the ducks go away, have them put those fingers down so that for each number, they're corresponding a number of fingers that are up on their hand. Another thing that you can do to help your child with one-to-one -one correspondence is to use what's called a 10 frame. Not only will this help your child with one-to-one -one correspondence, but it'll also prep them for the kind of math work that they're gonna be doing once they reach school age. So a 10 frame is just like this. It's a simple rectangle that's divided into 10 boxes. And then what you do is you can give your child a number, for example, five, and then have them count and place items, one in each box, until they reach that number. And then ask them to tap and count, one, two, three, four, five. The last thing that I'm gonna to suggest today in order to help your child with one-to-one -one correspondence is to ask them questions. When they're doing something like we just did on a 10 frame, ask them, what number did you make? Ask them to show you how many of an object that they have. Ask them to count to make sure that that's the number that they're supposed to have made. Ask them why do they have that many objects? For example, why do you have that many sons? And usually the child will respond with something like, well, because the number's three, so I have one, two, three sons. Ask them how they counted. Ask them to show you again how they counted so that you can see that they're tapping and saying a number each time they tap. One, two, three. One-to-one -one correspondence is one of the skills that's gonna help your child for the rest of their life. It's one of the base skills that they need for all the math that they're gonna be doing in the future. So, so one of the easiest things that you can do to help them in this area with all of their math skills is to just bring it into your daily life. Ask your child when you're in the kitchen to help count how many ingredients are going into a recipe that you're making. When you're putting away groceries, ask them to count the cans as you put them into the pantry. While you're folding the laundry, ask them to count how many socks and to put matching socks together and see how many pairs of socks they have. Basically, just give your child as many opportunities as you can throughout the day and in their normal life to use the math skills that they're working on. And as always, don't get too serious about it. Have fun.